Hello everybody, today is yet another video about minimalism. I have my magical leather um, journal in which I write out all of my video ideas. And this will seem contrary to one of the points I'm going to cover, but I will explain why it is not. Um, at any given point, I only have one journal going and usually it's just ideas journal. So let's start. Today is going to be about the small steps that you can take to move closer towards minimalism. Why would you want to though? Why is minimalism important? Um, first of all, there's not really a very clear definition of what it is exactly. And everybody can pretty much derive what they want out of it because um, depending on whether you're talking about music or art or lifestyle or decluttering, it can mean all things to all people. So um, here, my definition of minimalism is living with what you need, and that's it. <laughs> so um, we're talking about, obviously, my previous videos, I did a lot of talking about the mindset of minimalism and how important it is, and most of the minimalism is going on here, but it has a very real reflection in our outside world, in our environment, in the environment that we create for ourselves, and oftentimes just overwhelm ourselves with <laughs> to the degree that is absolutely unnecessary. Much mental clarity can be derived from modifying your environment because our brain is wired and made in a way that the more it needs to process on an everyday basis the less bandwidth it has for processing other stuff stuff that is important stuff that we actually would like to invest time and energy into so this bandwidth of our brain is extremely important and to some degree not only clearing things out from your head outwards, it's very, very important to clear things out from your environment inwards because, uh, well, if you do both, then you're golden. So let's start with point number one. My first piece of advice is to go paperless with your documentation. Now, a lot of us, um, including myself, have a lot of different pieces of information that are constantly bombarding us on everyday basis. Now, of course, in medicine, I work in medicine, uh, paper charts are still prevalent in some um, health organizations, which is just, it breaks my heart. This is so inefficient and messy. Many people prefer them. EMRs, electronic medical records, are not perfect. But you know, piles of paper aren't perfect either. Hopefully we will get to the place where most things are delivered electronically and sorted out in a way that um, is convenient and easy to use. It's not the case right now with electronic medical records, but you know, maybe I'll make a separate video about electronic medical records. We really don't need to talk about it here. Most of us, like our documents, our taxes, our forms, just random pieces of paper somehow make our, their way into our environment and clutter it, clutter it, clutter it to the point where the bandwidth of your brain is reduced because you all the time have to live in an environment that is full of unnecessary pieces of information all the time. Um, obviously, mentally, social media, for instance, does the same thing. So cutting that out is gonna make you much healthier mentally. But uh, going paperless is actually a really wonderful thing because it frees up a lot of physical space, which is a very tangible decluttering thing. This is why most people like to declutter their environment, not necessarily their thoughts right away. Um, thoughts come later. But decluttering your environment is just very tangible. You can see the results of it. You remove things and you feel better. So it's a very, very quick feedback. Um, and decluttering your environment is really a wonderful idea. Going paperless is a good idea because you can still preserve all the information you want and need. Like for instance, most manuals, if you're buying a piece of equipment of some sort or an electronic piece of some sort, comes with manuals and things like that. Really, they can all be easily found online for free, so you don't need to keep those things. You don't need to keep your tax returns because they can be kept digitally. Basically, everything and anything can be kept digitally. You absolutely do not need to keep your receipts from five months ago. You can scan them in if you want to keep them, um, and there are many applications that will help you do that. Keeping your documents and lists and agendas digital has a lot of merit. I know there's a huge movement online, um, towards journaling and journaling is so important and it can be a very good tool to sort of sort your thoughts out or a meditation technique also you know there's lots of benefits to journaling and if you're into journaling then good good for you go for it like i said i have a little 
um, papered journal. I only own one in total. Um, and then when I run out of it, I will, I just will get another one. But I own one journal and that's for thoughts and ideas generating those. The rest of my to-do lists, shared to-do lists, um, um, my life goals, everything basically is kept digitally on my phone because that's always with me. Sometimes when I'm in a funk, all I have to do is look at my phone and go like, okay, what are my life goals for this year? And I look at my list of life goals and I'm, I'm reminded of what is important and what I should strive towards if I'm overwhelmed and lots of details are going on in my mind, just sort of click, 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 click. I can stop and look at what is important, what I set up for myself to do, and that's helping. Um, that's helping you to sort things out, prioritize, see where you are in your total sort of overview goal, bird's eye view. Um, details like what we keep on to-do lists and in our agendas, um, that can be lost easily, plus you have to haul your agenda everywhere with you if you want your lists to be with you. Store them digitally. Don't write them down on pieces of random paper. Don't write them down in a journal that then you need to carry with you everywhere. Have them digital on your phone. Um, the app that I enjoy the most, and I tried a few of them to see which one I would enjoy the most. And my favorite was Wonderlist. We share task lists with my husband, grocery lists. Like, you know, it's very, very easy for both of us to edit this these lists that we need to edit at the same time. We can prioritize tasks. It's very, very easy, especially if you are living with a partner or a family member with whom you like to coordinate activities and you like to coordinate priorities and you like to share lists. This is invaluable and so much more effective, efficient um, and easy to do than um, going going at it on paper. Um, the other thing is obviously calendars. I used to be a big agenda person in my uh, undergrad days, but nowadays I do everything digitally. I have my Google Calendar app, which it just tracks everything for me. I have a reasonably hectic schedule um, because of my work, and I'm just able to keep on top of things because I can very easily digitally edit it. I can share my calendar, for instance, with my husband, but if we need to coordinate something, and it's just so much, so much easier to have everything in one spot and your phone be the hub of all the things that you need. Um, so I strongly, strongly suggest you check out a few apps, you find what you like best. These are the things I like best. And these are my two must have life organization apps. Um, try them out and see what you enjoy and try them out and see if it works for you. And some people might still really prefer paper agendas or whatever else. Um, but for most people, I think it'll work very, very well. Okay, very, very long-winded. Number two, minimize mental clatter and use technology to do that. So uh, we already talked about uh, Google Calendar and Wonderlist applications, which I use to or go paperless and organize my life. Um, you can also use stuff like Evernote. That can be very, very useful. But for me, that was too involved. I like a much simpler approach to planning my time. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about um, basic things that will automize your home. Um, automizing your home, if you can afford it and if you're inclined towards it, can be a very good time saver. For instance, you know, the dishwasher, obviously, nobody washes clothes, almost nobody washes clothes by hands in North America anymore, but, you know, um, definitely a laundry machine is very important to have. Um, definitely the dishwasher, which is broken at this time in my house because we had an old dishwasher, well, old seven-year-old dishwasher that came with the house and it corked. So we need to replace it. We haven't yet, uh, but we will in the future. So um, things like robotic um, vacuums. Uh, we own Roomba for many, many years and it just goes around and vacuums your place. We have no carpeting whatsoever in our house, so it's very easy for the robot to go around. Besides, we have a minimal house, so there's very little furniture and there's very little um, hindrance to the robot. So I think those things are very, very good investments. Uh, plus, automatic features um, also through applications on your digital devices. Uh, scanners, like for instance, if I have a bill or a receipt that I need to save, I can just get a little scanner app on my phone, which I have and use all the time, and scan that, and I don't need to bring that into my life, into my purse, into my home. It's just digitally saved, and I don't need to worry about it. 
um, and also dictation. I have been completely um, obsessed with dictation instead of typing. I love dictating. Mac offers this feature for free on basically all of their devices these days. Um, I dictate almost everything, including text messages, unless there's somebody around me that I don't want to disrupt or I don't want to hear when I'm texting. But uh, I just, I use texting feature a lot and I dictate that a lot. It's just easier. So, you know, automate your writing emails dictation by dictation is, that's, that's a really good tip and I'm saving tons of annoyance and tons of time doing it. Besides, I'm more likely to respond if I can just talk to the phone and tell it what I want to say instead of typing it out because that just takes way longer so I'm less likely to respond in a timely fashion um, and I use that for work all the time as well. Next we have Number three, number three is have a donate bag or box in your possession. For me, it's a nice woven box that my mom had made for me. Um, some of those I use for, you know, underwear and socks and stuff like that in my closet. Those are sorting boxes. And one of them I definitely love using as a donate box, which means that if my kid outgrows something and I need to put it somewhere to donate, instead of just randomly sticking it back into his closet and then realizing like six months later that it's too small, I just put it into the donate box right away. My clothing, my husband's clothing, shoes, um, really any item that I would I would think goes into a donation bin at a Goodwill or something like that um, is what I exactly what I put in there. So most things can be if they're in decent enough shape can be donated. Otherwise, they go for rags uh, for doing all kinds of. My my husband likes to do handiwork, so he uses rags all the time. So an old shirt is perfect for that. Anyway, having a donation bin, which you can then just stick into the car, either a bin or a bag or whatever, and drop it off whenever it's convenient for you is an, a fantastic idea. And I do strongly suggest you, um, you just put that in your closet and dump things in there whenever you're done with them or whenever you want them out. The benefit of the donate box is that it probably sticks around for a month or two before you drop things off, which means that if you miss an item or if you regret getting rid of an item, it's just right there, so you can just pick it back out and use it as you need it. Next, number four, unsubscribe for all the mailing lists. If you're anything like me, my email used to be riddled with a variety of offers and here's what's new and you know it's just it's a bit of a mess when you are a person who enjoys shopping. These companies really know what they're doing when they are uh, forcing you to basically sign up for these lists. Sometimes it's an offer, sometimes it's like you can't proceed unless you sign up. That is extremely annoying, but a lot of people just sign up and then block it in some way. But um, generally that kind of spam still, especially if it's from your favorite stores, delete it if it's from your favorite stores mostly because you probably don't need to be buying crap from there, do you? <laughs> you wouldn't have thought to go and check what's on their website, what's new, if it wasn't um, if it wasn't explicitly <laughs> sent to you in your mailbox, just don't. Just don't accept those. If you need something, you go to the website of your favorite designer or whatever. You choose what you need. You buy it. It's done. Um, it's a sure way to acquire more crap and it's a very, very smart marketing technique when things just appear in your email and you just out of curiosity check them out. Our lizard brain is wired to want things we see. If we don't see it, we don't want it, we don't care about it, we don't feel deprived if we don't get it because we never really even thought about it. Try to not sign up for those things and delete the um, emails that are coming through, meaning that just unsubscribe, just, you don't need it, just move on. Number five, if you are bored with your decor, don't buy more decor. <laughs> um, I know lots of people, especially like people who stay at home a significant portion of their time, really crave changing things up. There's a lot of decorating or redecorating or whatever that goes on. Lots of new rugs and like window dressings and appels that just seem to be multiplying in people's homes. And then you try to get rid of the pillows you're no longer using. Like, just stop. Try moving your furniture around first, see if you find a new arrangement of furniture that works for the space and then this will feel fresh for some time. And then you can move it, move it again, <laughs> so that's what we do. I don't buy seasonal decor, we have our Christmas decor for the little one and it's resting in the basement for most of the year. Probably when he grows up and we no longer need to 
make the hoopla about the holidays, we are going to stop with that too. Generally, adding extra stuff to your home is not going to make it any better. <laughs> it usually makes things worse because you do not have more things to store and your space is getting more and more cluttered. Some people perceive clutter as coziness, but most of us are not wired to feel well when we're overwhelmed by objects around us. So clearing out some objects from your environment really can make you feel a lot lighter and better, more organized, more on top of things, and just sort of less messy. So do that. And instead of buying the new rug, if you really feel like you want a, a new space or try to freshen up your space, just move your couch, like move it to a different location, reorganize the room around it a bit and yeah, see if you feel better. For most of what I want in terms of like feeling freshening up the room, just moving furniture works fine. Try it out first. If it doesn't work for you, go ahead and buy another lampshade or whatever. But you know, if it does do the trick, then perfect. You have basically spent no money and added no crap to your lifestyle. Excellent. Number six, this is go paperless, but re with regards to books. I love reading paper books. I love the feel of paper, the smell of paper in a new book. There's something very special about having paper, but honestly, we should just all go digital. I have, and I do a lot of audio books for sure. I've started recording books as well. So for me, it's a it's an adjustment because I do love paper books as a lot of us do, but it's just not sustainable. <laughs> what if everybody wants paper books? We're just going to cut down all the trees to accommodate people. It is unrealistic. If you really love paper books, go secondhand, stop buying online, stop buying in the bookshop if anybody still goes. You know, you don't you don't need paper books to enjoy books. You can either read if you love just reading with your eyes. Your eyeballs can do all the work digitally um, or from digital copies. But I would recommend trying audiobooks. And it's also digital and it's much easier to listen to a book on the go if that is something that you can do or in the car. And you can still reap the benefits of reading without actually having to read and getting tired and sleepy. Uh, you can do it while doing other stuff, um, or you can do it just sitting down calmly in your armchair. Uh, so audiobooks or maybe digital copies, but stop buying paper. All that paper books do is nowadays, I think, just tells other people who come into our home what kind of person we are, because it's like a basically a show of what we read. And especially if it's if it's uh, highly intellectualized books or books that you should really read because they're classics. Maybe you even haven't read them, but like the, the bookshelf says that you have, and maybe you appear a little bit better than you did before to the people who come in and see that. Useless. So stop. It's just dust collecting. How many times do you reread books in your life? Not a lot, I bet. There may be a couple of books that you've reread previously, but usually we don't reread books. We just get new books. And what we have is just standing there collecting dust and it's not never going to be touched again unless you donate the books and let somebody else pick through them, which is a decent option. And we should definitely recycle books in that way. But if you want to read something that just came out, just, just get a digital copy, seriously. Number seven, use multi-purpose products. And I'm going to give everybody a couple of examples of what I mean. But for instance, I'm not huge on hair. I don't really do a ton of things to my hair. I have a little go-to things that I might do with my hair and one of them is waving it. Another one is straightening it. That's basically all I do and that's mo what most people do. However, many of us have closet folds of a variety of hair instruments of some sort that look like torture devices, curlers of a variety of shapes. Many of them look like they can involve, be involved in some kind of sex play. And we just, we, we usually don't really use them. We have like one or two tools that are go-to tools. For me, I figured out that really all I need is a flat iron with slightly rounded edges, meaning that I use flat iron for both straightening and curling my hair, and I think it's very, very easy. I'm not a big fan of having 15,000 different curlers that create slightly different curls that all look the same by the end of the day, by the way. Um, just just get yourself one tool that works. And for me, flat iron is great because I can do anything with it. It's a very easy tool to use and less likely to burn yourself than you are with a curler because it closes, the plates close and you're not 
touching them or less likely to touch them. So yeah, get yourself a flat iron, get rid of the rest of your hair tools because you probably don't use them on an everyday basis and they're probably just also collecting dust in your closet. That's one multi-purpose item. Another multi-purpose item is a multi-purpose cleaner. I used to have a variety of different cleaners for every surface. Now I don't I have a one scrubby thing of some sort that really gets to work and gets rid of whatever gunk um, I might want to remove from whatever surface. And I have a multi-purpose cleaner that at this point I, I mix up myself because I, I want a non-toxic option and non-toxic options for some reason are pretty gosh darn pricey. So I mix a touch of Castile soap with some water and vinegar 50-50. Um, and I add a little bit of essential oils for a nice smell. You don't even have to do that. And you can do it also with just water and vinegar 50-50 and nothing else. It's a very easy recipe. Everybody's using it. It's, it's simple. You certainly don't need anything special to clean surfaces or windows. Vinegar cleans windows very well. So just skip the soap and skip the oil. Water and vinegar will clean your windows just fine. You know, do things that are simple to do. And I'm not somebody who does a ton of DIYs or wants to complicate my life in any way, but that, that sort of a cleaner is so easy to mix up and you always have ingredients in your kitchen to do that. Um, so yeah, more multi-purpose, fewer things to worry about. Castile soap also goes into my little pumps for hand wash. Um, and I can, in a pinch, use it for basically anything, including laundry and uh, dishwashing. So, you know, those multi-purpose items are really great. Number eight, get a safety razor if you shave. Obviously, if you lasered yourself from head to toe and you no longer need to shave, lucky you, <laughs> good for you. Um, I still shave my legs. Um, I still haven't lasered them. I should probably do that some, at some point in the future. That's a pretty minimal thing to do. Uh, but right now, I still do use a razor and having a, an actual uh, reusable steel safety razor is a fantastic idea mostly because I now never run out of razor blades because I bought they came with the with the razor and I have enough probably to last me until I die so I have a ton, like it comes with a ton like you literally will never go through them and you know the this razor is sturdy it looks beautiful and for some of us it's important for some of us not so much those Pink lady razors are gross looking. I'm sorry, I don't like them. Um, and you have to always change them. They go dull pretty quickly. And then you have to mentally make either stock up, so more crap to worry about, or worry about always picking some up constantly. And they're pretty expensive too. Um, so going for a safety razor, I now have gotten very, very um, comfortable with using it. So yeah, it's a bit of an adjustment when you're switching from plastic lightweight double razor or triple razor to a very heavyweight single razor. It's a little bit different, but I can't say that I cut myself anymore. I can't say that my shave is any worse because it isn't. You just sort of adjust to a slightly different feel of the um, tool and then it's fine. It works the same. So I totally recommend it mostly because I now never have to literally never have to worry about um, being out of razors. I just have like 75 of these or 100 of razors just sort of sitting in my closet and they take up about this much space and it's enough for a lifetime. And whenever I feel like it's slightly dull even, I just sort of unscrew it, put a new razor in, and it's functional again. It's really, really easy and I really enjoy it. I enjoy having one less thing to worry about on my shopping list. It's nice. And it's gonna it's already paid for itself and I only had it for about a year. But the amount of money I spent on getting this razor that is going to last me forever versus getting a year worth of okay quality razors that are plastic, um, it's all savings from now on. Also, imagine how many crappy razors, also, uh, along with two toothbrushes really you're going through and throwing into landfills uh, instead you can eliminate that completely have one metal razor and no more plastic you're cutting that completely out which is really really nice I think number nine this is one of my favorites and I've just reasonably recently started doing that maybe about four months ago um, capsule wardrobing Capsule wardrobing is a very good tool to simplify your life, your time, and waste less money. 
goes along with buying less obviously <laughs> you can't be shopping a ton but once you have a small capsule that you're happy with this is really all you need um some some, some people really get their panties in a twist about wearing the same outfit twice get over it clothing is not supposed to fall apart on you after you wear it once that's weird that's a weird way of thinking it's an odd idea moreover if you have that kind of way of thinking please let me reassure you there's not one person apart from your family and close friends in this universe who gives a crap about what you dress like nobody cares as long as you're presentable and clean and don't smell People won't even notice what you're wearing. Nobody cares about what you're wearing. Maybe if you're a fashion blogger or in some way involved in that kind of world, which is warped and weird in its own way, <laughs> like seriously, if you are a person living your life in this world, you really should um, just curate a little capsule wardrobe for yourself. However many seasons you have, just have that many tiny wardrobes with some transitional pieces and you're golden. You have so much less stuff. The stuff that you have fits together and you never ever have to again wonder um, if things match or if you look stupid or try five shirts in the morning just to get an outfit that is acceptable or appropriate. Just no, just get yourself, invest time and brain space for like two hours of your life, hopefully it won't take longer than that, to create yourself a little seasonal capsule for the season you're in. And that's it. And everything matches together. Everything works together. You never have to think about outfits. Everything is just easy and simple and doable. And all of a sudden, you look like you have your life together and you stop using the precious bandwidth of, of your brain on thinking about which freaking shirt or skirt you're going to wear because that's a waste of your life. Um, some people have it as a job. Some people have it as a hobby. If, you, if, if for you it's onerous and you don't like it, get a capsule wardrobe. I love having a capsule wardrobe. It's the best choice I've made in a long time and it just really, really works well. I have a tiny little wardrobe. I'll show it to you sometime soon on camera. And this tiny, tiny little wardrobe serves all the needs I have. And it's easy and it's simple and it's it requires no effort on my part, which I love. Number 10. Focusing on what you need and have instead of what you want. And I'm not saying don't have goals, don't think about what you want. That's not what I'm saying. I'm really talking about objects in your environment. Most of us, a lot of us, have enough crap to last us years when it comes to clothing and shoes. And, you know, there are very few people out there who have like three pairs of shoes and wear through them. Most of us have far more than what we need. We always think that we need more and we feel unhappy about it. In fact, you're feeling unhappy about yourself and who you are as a person and where you are in your life. Your crap has nothing to do with it. It's not even a factor, but we're made to believe that, you know, getting one more pair of shoes or this particular designer purse, that's what's going to make you happy and it won't. It's always a big disappointment and it's always just a step in the wrong direction financially and emotionally. So don't, you know, Focus on what you have. You probably already have enough crap to work for you. Focus on what, what it is that is in your possession. And actually, once you declutter and you have fewer things, you appreciate them much more. That's the magic of decluttering. All of a sudden, that shirt that you forgot you had, and then all of a sudden, it's only one of the five shirts you kept. All of a sudden, you love the shirt. You wear it all the time. You enjoy it. You like the fabric. You know, if it's a crappy shirt, then obviously you won't like it. But if it's a good quality piece that fits you well, you're going to just enjoy it. And you're going to get a lot more, both financially and emotionally, out of your stuff, the fewer objects you have. So really minimizing your environment has to do with that. You're, it forces you to be more content with the things that you do have and focus less on the things that you want. Uh, this want for things is really quite a toxic way of our brain to say you're quite unhappy right now. It's not really a way to say you need this. It's more like you don't have this, you need this. The lizard brain is making us believe things that are not true. Get control over your lizard brain and stop focusing on the things that the social media and regular media and every marketing company that wants something out of you wants you to believe are important are not actually the things that are going to make you the happiest. We all know that in theory, but how many of us actually actively practice gratitude, feel good about what we have, and focus on what we have rather than what we don't have. Try that out. 
try just a little time to yourself, whether it's meditation or just thoughtful five minutes to appreciate the things that you do have. And then I don't necessarily mean like, I have a job, I'm really appreciating it. Although that is a good way to think about what is important in your life or what parts in your life are actually present and working well for you. Obviously focusing on that is very healthy for your psyche, um, for your whole psychological and psychiatric health, perfect. But actually focusing on the objects around you that you enjoy is also good for your mental health. So, you know, get happier with what you have instead of keeping yourself unhappier with what you don't have. Very, very simple notion, really not rocket science. Most of us don't do it. All of us should do it. Okay, so that was a long list. That's it for today. I hope it was fun for you to um, get my 10 tips, 10 points. Write down below if you agree, disagree, or have any other things to offer to our common brain pretty certain you guys had that stuff really stored away nicely in your brain so none of that is new but you know let's talk about it let's share with each other let's let's uh continue to think about minimalism and how it can improve our lives um and those 10 tips are mostly a conversation starter so let's start that conversation down below see you guys later have a wonderful day i hope you're in a good mood and good luck